What's up everyone? Welcome to this video on subitizing. We're going to be talking about what it is, the learning trajectory of it, the progression, and some activities that go along with it. Okay, so first off, subitizing, what is it? Doug Clements wrote, students use pattern recognition to discover essential properties of number such as conservation and compensation. They can develop such capabilities as unitizing, counting on, and composing, and decomposing numbers, as well as their understanding of arithmetic and place value, all valuable components of number sense. Subitizing is essential for number sense. Let's take a look at how it would work. I'm gonna flash an image. Okay, how many did you see and how did you see them? With subitizing, you show the students a quick image like we just did. And teachers after will ask, well, how many did you see and how did you see them? Meaning, what was the arrangement? How did you see them um, in, in what form? As the students talk about it, the teachers write down what the students are saying or picturing. Now you're gonna see in primary grades that sometimes students get very frustrated when the teacher doesn't draw it right. No, that's not what I meant. Don't put the dot there. Um, that does not mean pass on the marker. And teachers, I know it's easier to do that. Okay, well, you just draw how you saw them, but I really want you to hold on to that marker. The reason being is because it helps students with their explanation. It helps students with their vocabulary, and it helps students with their communication. So here's an example. Let's say that Sam said, I saw two dots, and they were just uh, not next to each other. They were slanted. So I'm going to try to draw what Sam is saying. I may draw it incorrectly, and that may make Sam frustrated. Let's continue. Robert may say, oh, it kind of looks like dots on the dice. Okay, great. Melanie will uh, say, I also saw two dots. I think Sam means diagonal. That is what Sam is trying to say, the word diagonal, but he doesn't have that vocabulary just yet. So if we have passed on the marker to Sam and had him draw it himself, that he we would lose the opportunity to teach him what that means. We do have to allow that sense of frustration because at the end of the day, we do want Sam to realize that when he means slanted, he actually means diagonal. So as you can see, it's a great way to encourage students to communicate, explain their thinking, build on their vocabulary, as well as that number sense piece. Now, before continuing, I want to talk about the two types of subitizing that there are, because both types are important and one builds off the other. So first, we'll talk about perceptual subitizing. That's basically looking at an image and automatically knowing that that is the amount. There's no pause, there's no like process to try to figure it out. It's like this example, that's two. And perceptual subitizing happens usually with numbers or amounts that are less than five. Now conceptual subitizing is a little bit different. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Conceptual subitizing are usually images that hold five or more objects. But in order for students to figure out how many there are, you actually almost have to break it apart into groups in order to figure out the whole quantity. With conceptual subitizing, you would have to figure out how to find patterns, how to use like spatial relationships in order to find out the total. The more dots or figures that there are, uh, the more strategies and groupings you can use to figure out the total amount. And we're gonna go over, those are the two forms of subitizing, but we're gonna go over the learning progression of it in a little bit. Okay, how many did you see and how did you see them? Before continuing, this is an example of conceptual subitizing. There are more than five objects, right, dots here, and we would have to think about it a little bit differently in order to figure out the total amount. So perhaps some of you saw it like this. So when presenting this with students, that is how you want students to describe it to you. I saw a group of three that looked like this, another group of three, and then one more. And then you could actually create the expressions with them on the side. Notice this number sentence is a play on doubles and one more. Obviously this could extend to multiplication too. Students can say, I saw two groups of three. That's a great opportunity to talk about, well, what does two groups of three mean? It means six, and then I have one more. Now, some of you may have seen it like this, where you saw that group of five and then two on the side. So the expression would be five plus one plus one. And the reason why you probably saw it that way is because it's similar to what's on a die, the pips on a die. And this expression really lends itself to the counting on strategy, right? So I see five, five and one more is how much, and then one more is how much. So students can basically decompose in a bunch of different ways 
It's our job when presenting subitizing to actually help them with the expression piece of this and link it to any type of uh, fluency strategy. So you saw before doubles, now we can do counting on. Now one color dots play a factor in subitizing because as you can see here, if I were to present this quick image to students, they can break it up in a ton of different ways. Three and three and one, maybe five and two, maybe four and three, a ton of different ways. And that happens because all the dots are the same color. So it really provides students an opportunity to see it in a ton of different ways. Now there are subitizing dots out there that are separated by colors. So I want you to take a look at this one specifically. When we use colored arrangements like this, it's forcing students to look at a particular number sentence. The set on the right, I'm specifically seeing four and three more. Now the one on the left, I could have broken it up into a ton of different ways. The one on the right is a specific number sentence. So here's my recommendation. I recommend to start off with the uh, one color dot first. The reason being is that you really want students to be flexible in the groups that they see and that they create. Now, of course, after you can give students the two colored dots and have them see specific uh, number sentences and arrangements, but if we start subitizing off with the set on the right where, where it's different colors, we're actually forcing students to see it in a narrow way and we don't want that. We want there to be flexibility. So start with the one color dots and then you can of course transition to different colors when you want them to see something specifically. Now we're talking about subitizing dots, but you can subitize with other things, not just dots. You can subitize with ships. How many did you see and how did you see them? You can subitize with cars. How many did you see and how did you see them? You can subitize with 10 frames. How many did you see and how did you see them? You can subitize with rec and recs as well. How many did you see and how did you see them? It's important to keep in mind that this does not just have to be an activity with subitizing dots because you can provide extensions based off whatever shape uh, or object you provide. For example, perhaps I want to show these subitizing uh, cars right here, right? And I want students to, you know, come up with six. But perhaps for older grades, I want to extend the activity and say, well, we know that they each have four wheels. How many wheels would there be here? So they're doing the subitizing and figuring out how many cars and how they saw them. But then there's also that extension piece as well. You can do the same with geometry by providing students subitizing triangles, let's say, where they have to figure out how many triangles there are, but then you could extend the questioning to, well, how many sides total do we have if we consider all the triangles? So it's a way to extend a subitizing routine. Let me show you another way you can extend subitizing to upper elementary levels. How many did you see and how did you see them? So a very big misconception out there is that subitizing is purely for primary grade levels. Incorrect. You can incorporate subitizing with multiplication, as you see here, with fractions, with a ton of stuff. Let's say you put this quick image up. Manny, a third grader, said, I saw two groups of eight, which is 16. Monique says, I saw eight groups of two, which is 16. Then you can have the students have a discussion. Well, who is correct? Are there two groups of eight or eight groups of two? and they both came up with the number 16. How can they both be correct if they saw it in a different way? And you could ask them, well, how did you figure out how many there were? Did you break it up into sections? Because maybe not everybody saw eight and they saw six and six and then two. So there's so much conversations that can happen with subitizing as far as upper elementary grades as well. All right, I wanna get into some activities before we head out. One thing that I uh, recommend to teachers is to have students draw what they see. Now, earlier I said, what in primary grades, you wanna draw what they say, right? And that's in order to help them with their conversation, with uh, using positional terms. You want students to understand how to say, you know, uh, I saw a dot above that, below that on the side of, next to, you want primary students to use that language. So you really do want to record what they're saying to you. But I would also down the road provide them opportunities to have a whiteboard and actually draw how they saw it and then they can compare and contrast it 
with their neighbor, with the class. You can have some discussions around that. You could also have students organize what they see. So let's say I'm using my fingers to sabotage and I put three fingers up. You can place counters and five frames on the tables for students and just have them create what they're seeing. So if they see this, they can find three dots and put it on their five frame. And of course they can arrange them in any way as long as it's showing the quantity of three. Let's get into the trajectory. What's the progression of how students sabotage? This learning trajectory research comes from Clements and Sarama. Let's get into uh, the progression here, the developmental progression. So it starts off with pre-explicit number. These are like babies before they even come to you where they're subitizing in a sense of, I can see one object or I can see that there's more than one object. So one or some. Then it transitions to small collection. This is where a kid can tell you, you know, if they see uh, two of something or one of something, things like that. Now you'll see that there are lessons and tasks that you can use to support um, the progression on this as well. Okay, then you go into our perceptual subitizer. We talked about perceptual subitizing earlier. So it instantly recognizes groups up to five objects because remember when there's five or more, your brain shifts. This is where students see a quick image like we just did and they can figure out, okay, that's automatically three. I know that there's three there. And then it moves on to conceptual subitizing, which we also talked about, a conceptual subitizer two, five. So you show students a quick image and they have to do some type of breakdown to figure it out. Okay, I saw two groups of uh, two and then one more, things like that. And then you'll have a conceptual subitizer to the number 10. So five is like really the first benchmark and then 10 is our next benchmark. So they're again using groups uh, to break apart what they're seeing in order to figure out how many. Our next benchmark after 10 is 20. Now it's very hard to see 19 random dots as a quick image. That is not, uh, they're not gonna subitize <laughs> that well there. But if they're seeing it in some type of organized structure or frame, like a 10 frame or a double 10 frame, they can figure out the quantity of dots, the amount of dots that there are, still grouping and breaking it apart into sections, but they have an organized way to look at that. And then the progression continues to a maker of small collections. So this is where a child makes a small groups of objects, less than four, um, with the same number as another group. So uh, the example I gave earlier where I hold up three fingers and then a child can take out three counters and put it in a five frame, that's basically that same skill. You eventually end up with a conceptual subitizer with place value and skip counting. So this is where a child sees structured arrangements. They can tell you the groups and what they saw, um, but they're using place value understanding to do that. And then the same goes to using place value and multiplication, which is the example I showed you earlier on how students would break it up into groups, but also use multiplication skills in order to figure out the quantity. All right, everyone, I'm hoping that you can see how subitizing is so important into building number sense, building flexibility of numbers, and some activities that you can use to get you started and showing these quick images. We want to keep in mind to not just isolate it to showing dots, to showing different objects. Also keep in mind that you want to really have uh, same color images at first in order for students to really build their flexibility. You want to keep in mind to record their answers and have them work on their communication on what, how many they saw and how they saw them. And you just want to keep the learning progression in mind because if a student is uh, doing some perceptual subitizing but has not moved on to conceptual subitizing, then you know that's an area that that student needs support in. All right, everyone, that's a wrap for me. I cannot wait to see all the subitizing activities that you do in your classrooms. Thank you.